Innovative scientific technology is constantly transforming the way we look at organisms. With MorphoBank, a web application that provides an online database and workspace for evolutionary research, scientists from all over the world can join forces to build evolutionary trees of different species. species bigger than a mouse, but uh, about 250 grams. It was an insect-eating mammal, and it lived in what's called the early Paleocene, which is a time that was just followed the extinction of the dinosaurs that people tend to be more familiar with. Humans are definitely basanal mammals, and this ancestor that we've reconstructed is part of our broad family tree. Its official name is, the, is a hypothetical placental ancestor because uh, we don't actually have a fossil of this. We can take information from the fossil record, information from living species, and then look back at a time like the Paleocene and really say with some confidence what we think extinct animals looked like at that time. What we do to um, reconstruct what any ancestor might have been like is in essence mapping the traits that we know about and working our way back down the branches. The only way that this was possible was because we were working in MorphoBank. MorphoBank is a cloud-based web application for scientists who are interested in storing information about the phenome or the morphology anatomy of organisms and using it to build evolutionary trees of those organisms. In a sense, this is kind of like our atom smasher project, you know. The next wave, the next possibility for work in what we call comparative and evolutionary biology. DNA sequencing became an enormous transformation in the way we look at organisms. At the same time, we can't forget all the external features above the level of the genome we call the phenome. And what's great is we now have some of the digital technologies that allow us to study those things in ways that are somewhat compatible with studying the genome. So that's what I think is the next arc, part of the arc, and to me, the most exciting one. When we put all our observations together, they sit in a, in a thing called a matrix, and that matrix can then be put through an algorithm to produce a tree, and then that tree is what tells us which species are related to each other. MorphoBank is one of many different kinds of initiatives to bring anatomy into the 21st century and to make it a, a big science where teams of collaborators can go and work in a shared context on a hypothesis that they're testing. Over the course of this work, we had six different countries involved, so a team of 15 or 20 collaborators over the years. We had a core team here at the American Museum of Natural History, we had another team based at the Carnegie Museum. Um, we had very important collaborators at several other institutions, SUNY Stony Brook, University of Florida, University of Tennessee. This is probably the, the biggest effort ever in this kind of way. It shows some interesting things that aren't necessarily reproduced in the genome trees. Indeed, uh, our results suggest that the timing of the evolution of this group was a fairly late event, right after the so-called dinosaur extinction event, the Cretaceous extinction event. And, you know, the inference there is that may have opened up a lot of opportunities for this group of little meek mammals to radiate to all kinds of forms. Thinking about deep time is, um, is, hard, to, is hard to wrap your mind around. It's, it's a very, very long expanse, far exceeds our own lifetimes. And to be able to say something about that is, I think, a very exciting way to connect our own evolution to the history of life and, and the bigger picture of what's happened and how species have changed through time.